right. Thank you guys, everybody, for joining. Um, we made sure that the title would be a little bit obscure and um, complicated so that hopefully all the people in the room know quite about a bit about marketplaces, um, care about B2B uh, and supply chain. And um, it's really kind of a little cool for me. Next slide. OK, you can't play on your phone if you're doing my slides. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so um, my name is Ruthie, and it's really a lot of fun for me to be here because as the uh, chief marketplace officer, um, I like to talk about marketplaces, and I like to be places where people talk about marketplaces. Marketplace conference is probably a good place to find that. Um, I uh, run a marketplace a company called Fredos, um, where we do freight. Okay, let's take the next slide. And uh, no. Mm, yes, all right, that'll do. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what happens when your marketplace does not have a simple supply structure. Okay, Many marketplaces, very clear who your supply is, very clear who your demand is. But sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than that. And, and what's great about that is you get all kinds of surprises, um, which are fun. Because uh, in the end of the day, the way I see marketplaces, my experience running a marketplace uh, company has been really that you're building a platform and you never know exactly where the bonanza is going to come from. And when I talk about marketplaces a lot, I use a lot of analogies of water. I talk to my team about the fact that they're all pipes and it's really about making sure that we connect the pipes in the right way and then the water starts flowing. Right, um, and I think sometimes about a big, big blanket, right, that we've created uh, with lots of wrinkles in it, and suddenly we find a wrinkle and we kind of pull and straighten it out, and suddenly everything starts to flow, and that's the way I feel about my job every day. It's a little bit of a multiplayer online game with lots of players, and the question is, who do you, you know, okay, you do that, you do that, you do that, and suddenly transactions start flowing. Um, sometimes they don't. So, um, but first, in order to do that, next slide, uh, you probably are going to have to understand what we do. And what we do is make global trade frictionless, right? Trade, okay, uh, involves shipping, moving goods around the world. It's pretty hard and complicated to move goods, but everybody does it. It's a trillion dollar market. Anybody who's walked into a VC knows how nice it is to say, I'm playing in a trillion dollar market, right? Doesn't matter what you say after that, you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> Uh, and um, we kind of set out to say, okay, trillion dollar market, let's totally change uh, the way it works and see if we can take a piece of it. Next slide. Um, because um, freight is confusing and complicated. Um, just to explain really simply, if you need to get a container full of handbags uh, from Vietnam to, uh, let's say, Ohio, um, you're going to need to pick it up at the factory get all the right documentation from the factory, so connect it to a, a truck, right? Bring it to the port, maybe put it in a warehouse, uh, put it at the port for a while, export documentation, get it on a ship, or maybe you took it to an airport and put it on a plane, let it make its way over, right? Import documentation, FDA regulations if you want to eat the bags, uh, and then you have your delivery as well. Okay, so when you talk about doing something that basically every single business, right, that deals with goods has to do every single day, okay, and it's complicated with a lot of different pieces in it. And um, people don't think about it that much because it's just happening out there quietly, but anybody who has to deal with freight will get that kind of look in their face when you talk to them about logistics and getting their goods and releasing them from the port and things are stuck with customs and they go all, uh, right? And um, because of this, it's been an industry that hasn't been touched very much by technology. It's a highly, highly fragmented industry. Um, next slide, where actually um, you have uh, many different layers of, of service uh, suppliers of service providers. Um, you have the carriers, okay? Those are the guys who have the planes and the trains and the ships. Uh, and then you have, of course, the importers and the exporters. Uh, and then you have all kinds of people in the middle who take the different services and, and tie them together so that um, you might be a tiny importer, 
right? You might be a tiny importer who owns a little corner store. Um, maybe you sell Halloween costumes, right? And once a year you get your one shipment of lots of Halloween costumes and then you sell them all year. Or you might be Target or Walmart, right? Um, in both cases, you're either dealing directly with carriers, okay? So directly with the shipping lines or the air, well, nobody's working directly with the airlines, but with the shipping lines, or you're dealing with freight forwarders and freight forwarders piece together all the different pieces of this journey. Okay. And they'll all try to make you think it's very complicated and that's why they're all needed. Right. Um, but we set out to assume that, you know what, it doesn't sound like rocket science, right? It's big boxes on a boat right? How hard could that be? Uh, and so we said, we're going to make this super simple. Next slide will show just how simple we made it, um, is we created an Expedia-like interface uh, that allows anybody who ships to come online, sign up, put in their needs. I need to ship what I need to ship from where, anywhere in the world, to anywhere in the world, um, hit a search and book, and then next slide to see um, options from tens of reputable uh, service providers uh, with all-in pricing uh, for all the different options you have uh, when you're shipping, okay? And um, literally when we came in and we started working on this and we talked to the people in the industry, they said, you will never succeed, never. They said, nobody will ever let their rates go up there because they don't want anyone to know how they're creating those rates. Okay, and you will never have anybody who'd be willing to hit book on something so complicated, right? It, it, it's shipping, you know, it, it's hard, right? Nobody, it's, it will never work. And um, well, it did. I have to admit that when we had our first version of the website and there was a book button, and like many of you who've built marketplaces, when you hit the book button, what it did is it sent me an email, <laughs> okay? And we kind of, I, I was sure nobody was going to hit book because I'd been told by the industry that it would never work. So you get the email and there, you're like, oh, okay, now what, right? So you go to the supplier, you go to the buyer, and you kind of make things happen. And, 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 and in the end of the day, I mean, this works very, very, very well. But how did we build it? Okay, if you have, um, if we look at the suppliers in this world, the freight forwarders, you're talking about about 100,000 Okay, different freight forwarders. There are very few industries that are still that fragmented. And uh, next slide. Um, oh, sorry, this is what you get afterwards as you can see exactly where your shipment is. It's tr truly cool, but not what we're talking about here. So let's go to the next slide. Next, yep. Um, so um, what we did is uh, we said, okay, who are we going to use on the supply side? Okay, so again, you have the people who own the ships, and then you have small freight forwarders and big freight forwarders, and they're all buying and selling amongst each other. So who do we want to be our supply side, right? So today, if you have a small company, they'll usually go to a small freight forwarder, and they'll get service from them. If you have a big company, they'll go to a big freight forwarder, or maybe they'll go to the carrier directly. So when we decided what are we going to, who are we going to bring on board, um, we weren't quite sure. And this would be a little bit like um, if we were Uber, next slide please, uh, you would actually have the option of saying, well, you have passengers, right? They can go to dispatchers, or they can go to personal cabs or they can go to people's cars like who are you going to bring on your bo on board right who are you going to have are you going to have are there anybody is there anybody who has both cabs and cars and you know scooters and everything else um, and so what we decided to do a little bit um, next slide please is actually uh, invite everybody to the party um, and see what would happen okay um, it wasn't exactly like that. It never is exactly like that. Uh, we thought, oh, of course we want to go straight to the carriers. We want to go to the people who are giving the best service, right, um, at the lowest prices and bring that all the way directly to the uh, shippers and the businesses. Um, get rid of all those people in the middle who are taking margins and just make a great service. But it never works that way on day one, right? 
what happens on day one is you actually manage to get uh, the smaller service providers who are looking for ways to market and are excited by new technologies. Uh, and then on day two, you get some some bigger providers who are like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll experiment with you. And then suddenly you do actually get somebody who's further up in the stack, right? And, and so we ended up um, discovering that uh, when bringing lots of different types of businesses, small businesses and large businesses, and bringing lots of different service providers and lots of different layers, um, we found some things that were really, really su surprising to us. So next slide, I mean, one of the things that we discovered that really surprised us, uh, next slide, is um, that the huge sellers actually that we thought we needed to bring on right away because they were going to bring the best prices and everything was going to be great once they were on, um, they actually couldn't service the small buyers. Uh, they didn't know how. Okay, so there we had this great marketplace where suddenly this guy with a Halloween store on the corner could book with the kind of service provider that would never have spoken to him before. And here he hit book and there, there was a transaction, right? Uh, but it failed miserably. It failed terribly uh, because large service providers said, okay, here are 17 forms to fill out. And little guy with costume store said, huh, what's a form? Oh, what, what do you want from me? Um, at the same time, uh, a service provider we had who um, actually worked out of his house, right? Okay, so we're talking about uh, a service provider who did freight forwarding out of his house was beating one of the largest multinational companies in the world at freight forwarding, right? And I always imagined this guy, actually, I don't know why, sitting on the edge of his bed, like, you know, with a desk right there, you know, and, 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 and there he was, he was snatching business up like there was no tomorrow, right? And he was getting great reviews, whereas the big players were getting terrible reviews. Uh, and suddenly we understand that market appropriate service wins, right? The different people within the market knew how to serve different segments of the market. So that was number one. Number two, we discovered that um, actually even if they're not able to service the smaller buyers, um, they attract people, right? Having the big names selling on your marketplace um, is a big deal. And having that kind of, uh, when we would walk in the door to speak to people about our marketplace, when we could say, well, of course you can sell here. Look at these top names, top tier names that are selling on the marketplace. Why wouldn't you? And also to say to them, you know, if you don't, then everybody's going to eat your lunch, right? So, um, and, and that actually worked for the top players as well, because even if they're not selling, they liked the opportunity to experiment, okay? So when you bring uh, the big players on who are not able, they, w they run huge multinational corporations, they're not able to experiment with online, uh, and they're looking for opportunities, and they're not necessarily looking for huge revenue right away uh, from your platform, um, but they are looking to understand what it means to go online and what it means to sell online. And so that was a, uh, a huge uh, discovery for us. Number three um, was actually a little mind blowing is that very quickly we saw how large players and small players actually wanted to play together. So some of the um, large uh, uh, um, service providers knew that they were missing services uh, to be able to provide fully to the uh, end customers. For example, if you look at um, an airline like Delta, okay, they do cargo and they ship from port to port, but they're, they don't have delivery and they don't have pickup and they don't have insurance and they don't have uh, a lot of the ancillary uh, services that are required. And so when we said to them, hey, how would you like to mix and match with one of the smaller providers on our platform? They were like, oh, cool. Right, And then suddenly, as a pl platform, we're providing a tremendous amount of value. I mean, we're allowing okay, uh, these service providers to sell to different tiers in the market in ways that they never could before. Number four um, was actually that uh, having people from across the globe um, and creating, inviting everyone to the party. Um, we invited service providers who don't know English, 
um, have never been able to sell directly to the West before. So remember, freight is a global uh, industry. And um, in today, outside of the online world, uh, service providers from China um, have to sell through service providers in the United States. Okay? And we suddenly said to them, hey guys, want to sell direct? You do need to hire somebody who can speak to the customers in English, but everything else is fine. And these guys cleaned up, okay? Cleaned up because they knew, they knew the business, they had great rates, right? They were right near the supply side. So when they're picking up goods from the factories, they know exactly where the factory is. They can talk to them. They can make it all happen beautifully, right? Uh, and they quickly learned how to use our platform to really uh, sell a tremendous amount in a way that had not been possible uh, before our platform. Uh, and number five um, is that actually the pricing was nothing like what we thought it would be. Okay, uh, we made an assumption that uh, the closer you were to the actual carrier, to the actual uh, vehicle that's moving the goods, the better pricing you'd be able to give, right? Makes sense, right? You assume that the guy who owns the ship charges $10 and then somebody marks that up by another two and another two and another two. And basically the further you are away from the actual ship, the higher the prices are gonna get. And what we discovered is in the crazy industry where you have 100,000 providers who are selling and cross-selling and double-selling and taking losses and cutting, you know, cutting, cutting their way into being competitive in all kinds of crazy ways, um, we have no way, and we still to the state, have very little way of predicting who's actually going to come up with the best pricing. Uh, so a uh, dude in his bedroom sitting on his bed can sometimes compete from a price perspective against very large carrier who owns uh, thousands of ships, right? Um, and uh, so, so these five things were 100% surprises for us. We had no idea that they would happen. Um, and uh, uh, we leveraged them. So next slide, I mean, really what we, what we did and, and what we learned is how to amplify uh, each of those. And, and as I say, it's a multiplayer online game. We're learning new things every day. But the first thing we did is we said, okay, we have different types of buyers and different types of sellers. We're going to encourage them to play with each other because they play best. Okay, this is also true from a pricing perspective. Um, so we actually took our marketplace and divided it into tiers and uh, buyers um, can apply based on their size uh, to participate in different tiers. Um, and sellers, based on what they're willing, the services they're willing to give, uh, are uh, also able to apply for different tiers. So that was number one. Uh, number two is that um, we allow a lot of brand building online, so reviews and making sure that even the small suppliers can build a really nice brand online became important because they're there competing against some very, very big players who are brand known names, and this allows uh, them to uh, play, play there effectively. Uh, number three is be very, very flexible about who's offering what and um, letting uh, sellers uh, resell. So for example, we have some sellers now who buy on our marketplace and resell on our marketplace, okay? Uh, yes, we double dip, thank you. Uh, but um, it, allowing that kind of real flexibility of understanding, okay, given what the customers need, how are the different suppliers able to play with each other and with us uh, to provide that? Um, number four is really look for the people who have good offerings but aren't managing to sell them uh, and close those gaps so that they can. Uh, for example, I mean, we have um, a communication board which is online, so it allows uh, the Chinese sellers to um, communicate online uh, with Western, with Western buyers, but we made sure to do it in a way that nobody's expecting immediate messaging back because of time zone differences, right? So um, uh, build that and make it, make it work well. Uh, and number five is really, you know, let everybody play because the things that come out are not the things you expected. Uh, and, uh, and, and they are things that uh, basically rock. Thank you very much. That's what I'm so sad. Okay, I think we have time for questions. Questions, yes. So um, I, I work with the cannabis wholesale business to business marketplace, which is very complicated and very similar. Oh, cool. Um, there's a lot of people who play in the middle. And what we're learning is 
that we're having to do quite a bit of handholding to get the orders to happen across the process when one uh, party buys and one sells. Mm -hmm. um, they they don't often make the right decisions or communicate in the right ways, and we have to mm. do a lot of handholding. Yes. How much handholding did you have to do? And uh, while that seems to be sort of a sales and customer support side, what did the marketing initiatives look like? Was it all educational, or how did you really help assist in that handholding? So so we have a team. They're called the freight team because we do freight. You could do, call them the cannabis team, sure. right? <laughs> uh, and what they do is anything the platform doesn't do, right? So they are our team. Uh, on day one, when you hit the book button, um, they would actually call up and, and talk to the buyer and say, okay, let's make sure you're a good buyer. Um, talk to the seller. Let's make sure that the pricing you put on the platform was the pricing you meant to put on the platform. Uh, and over, over time, it's evolved. So a lot of that is now automated. Um, and now what they do is they deal mainly with escalations. Um, so like anything else in a startup, you're running before you, you know, you're running, right? Even before the, anything's built there. Uh, and this team has been totally instrumental uh, in doing that. And we tell them, you do whatever you need to do to make sure the transaction works and is successful. Right. There have been some shipping platforms who had some not so great stories about things that happened to things on the way. And, you know, it needs to work. Whatever it needs to get there it needs to be good quality. So people. Right yeah. 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 Did you have concern about the freight forwarders being allowed on the system and then circumventing the system afterwards? Old schoolers yeah. are vague with relationship based. Yeah. And now you're letting everyone play. Yeah. So um, it, is a, it is a concern. Um, what, we, what we realized pretty early on is that the value we could give to the buyers um, was to tell them that the price is guaranteed, that the price isn't going to change. And we're in an industry where the price is constantly changing. So that was a huge value add for the buyer, uh, for them to stay on platform. Uh, and for the sellers, we said payment guaranteed. So we said, don't worry, no matter what, we're going to pay you. Um, and that was pivotal to making sure that both sides wanted to stay on platform. Um, so they do stay on platform. It's still a constant struggle. Um, it, they, they, we, we've got, had some great Reddit posts where people say, oh, I was so stupid. I was on platform. Everything was going great. I went off platform with, my, with my, the guy I'd met on Fredos, and all hell broke loose. And so, um, you know, there, there's value that you get from being on platform, and you have to keep on building that. I, I, there's just no way around that, I think. Yeah. 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 So it's been very important for us to not to be liable for the actual shipping. We're a marketplace. We can't afford to, you know, buy new Halloween costumes, especially those horrible ones. And uh, so the um, so first of all, we we do kick kick suppliers off platform if there are too many issues, uh, and they really care about the reviews. They, I mean, if sometimes they get a bad, a single bad review, they go crazy if we won't let them ch change it. So they care a lot. Um, and we've had to kick a number uh, of suppliers off. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it sounds like there's a lot of reasons that the suppliers would not like the platform in terms of transparency and pricing and so forth. So how did you convince them to come on? Um, so, the, so the first few times I went in to speak to them, I'd be like, okay, how would you like to publish your rates? And they're like, what? And then I came in and I said, hey, how'd you like a whole new business stream? And they were like, oh, yes, please. So um, I think one, one thing actually that the, that the multiple tiers um, allowed us to do is to say, look, <laughs> publish whatever uh, you want on the public marketplace. You can publish really, really high prices. It doesn't have to be your bottom prices. Um, on this special premium tier, uh, you have to, um, you can give more private prices. I'm being told that my time's up. Um, but anybody can, I think on the next one is my email address. Uh, anybody who wants to talk or set up time is absolutely welcome to. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are all having fun with your marketplaces. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.